Welcome to episode number 20, The Mentors. Hey, Mentors, we've got an anonymous caller here. His name is Wayne. Say hello to Wayne. Hey. How you going, Wayne? Thanks for having me on here. Where are you from? We understand you're from the inner west? Yes, I am. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Uh, tell us quickly a little bit about your marketplace um, and just maybe how your year's going so far. Yeah, so um, my marketplace is it's predominantly Victorian homes. Um, we, you know, there's a few Federation homes as well, but, but generally terraces, semi-detached homes. Yep. Um, you know, of an older style. What's your average sale price around there in that inner west of Sydney? Oh, probably around the 1.5. 1.5. And how's that market at the moment going? Yeah, it's 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 still it's very stable at the moment. Yep. Um, there are still buyers out there, not the same frenzy that we, we once saw yeah. 12 months ago. I think no one's seeing that. that at the moment, yeah. Yeah, which I think, yeah, that's like you say, it's, it's, it's happening everywhere. So, But it's okay. I don't think it's as bad as they're saying either. I think it's a, it's a part of the market where we, we get a lot of upsizes, yep. uh, which, which, is, which is good to work with. So people that are looking to make that next move, so they're not really too worried about the market, well, some of them are, but, but yep. some of them are not, and they know it's just lifestyle circumstantial changes that they need to make, so they need a larger home. Absolutely. Okay. So, um, Wayne, uh, thanks for joining us here on The Mentors this afternoon. What's your pressing question for us? you got Clinton, you got Matt, and you got myself. Hit us, buddy. Oh, hey, guys. Well, hey, I'm Wayne. looking forward to hearing uh, and uh, you know, take on board your, your advice. So, the situation that I'm in is I've got a vendor who is in a situation where they have to sell their home. Um, yep. If they don't sell it, the banks will sell it. And we all know what that means. Oh, we're, hearing, uh, we're, know, hearing, yeah, we're hearing a lot of that at the moment in the marketplace, a lot of financial stress happening. Yeah, go on. So they have yeah, to sell. So they've, I mean, the banks have been on them for 12 months. Uh, this is what I understand. And, and they finally made the decision um, to put on the market. Yep. And obviously, they're not getting the feedback that they want to hear. And they're not getting interest that they want in order for them to to make it, you know, worthwhile in their own terms. But they fail to understand that if they don't sell it this time round, the longer they take, it'll sell for less. Mm. And we all know that the banks, you know, will charge them all sorts of extra additional fees on top for facilitating the whole sale, um, which is not a favorable position for them. Um, I've recently had an interaction with them where basically they, they said, oh, we want to terminate our, our agreement with you mm-hmm. because they're not happy with what they're saying and they want to give it to another agent. To which I've responded, as long as you pay your marketing, that's outstanding. Mm-hmm. No problems. How long have they been, no the mar- how, how been on the market for, Wayne? It's just been on the market for, um, for a week. And a week? A few days. And, yeah. they, and they want to take it off you already? Maddie, Correct. what advice could you give our friend Wayne here from the Inner West? A um, <clears throat> couple of things, Wayne. Uh, how far do you think they are away from true market value? Look, I think percentage it's wise, very hard. Don't it's, mention it's dollars because you know, people might identify the property. What a, give me percentage? I think they're probably three hundred thousand dollars away from reality. Right. Um, okay. And, and I think the biggest problem is the person that they have that's really interested in the home is their neighbour who um, knows their circumstances as well, which doesn't help the whole situation. Okay, so you them wanting to terminate after one week, that would align, that, that, that's a red light for me that they're not getting on with yourself personally. Is that right? Well, they're just not liking the fact that I'm telling them what people are telling me. Because um, really, um, this is not a criticism at yourself, but after one week, would you really have a true snapshot as to where it's at to be able to be really, you know, it's it's a delicate situation. Somebody under under mental um, um, pressure from the banks and things like that, because people make, you know, desperate people make desperate decisions, and you need to manage that. So, I, I I'd, I'd say this to you: rather than lose the listing, is there somebody else in the office that's as good as you, or you know, as experienced, who you could bring in to work on the sale? Yes, there is. Yeah. 
That's what I would do immediately. I'd, in, I'd say, look, before we go and change agents, because that's not a good look from your point of view, I'd sell the fact that if they switch agents straight away, the market can see, you know, it's changed agents and that could be a red flag immediately. Why don't we sit with, uh, bring, bring the another agent in to work with them and you make, because it could be a personality clash. I've never seen or heard after one week an owner withdrawing something unless they're not happy with the agent. But you, you know what it is too, Matt, like, you know, when you're under financial stress, Stress. People yeah, just don't you make, think you, you make they, they make irrational yeah, decisions. You correct. Know? And you know they 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 look for blame, and it could just be let me blame this guy Wayne, this agent yeah. that hasn't sold my place in one week because maybe they're expecting a miracle in the first week. Um, from from my end, I would I would say to you this Wayne is is number one, um, always put yourself in the other person's shoes. I always think because you don't know what's going on through their life right now, what financial pressures mm-hmm. they might they might be finding. So number one, number two. I think you've got to come from a place of empathy as well rather than try, you know, sort of get into this defensive mode. Um, the third thing that I know about what great agents do is they're actually really good at doing two things, being caring but also candid. Um, you know what, if you're, if you're too candid um, all the time and too direct and not showing that empathy, being the caring bit, um, people start to resent you. Um, and I will also see it the other way where I see agents becoming too caring and not giving the people – the truth of yeah. where they need to be and then that becomes a dysfunctional relationship with between the vendor and Wait, the agent yeah you know? totally if we if we um if we waved a magic wand and took this back another two weeks would you do anything different to where you what you've done now yeah I would yeah yeah so there's there's that's I'm glad you said that because the first um way of accepting there's a challenge is actually admitting it yeah so we don't need to know what that is on on uh, live today but if you know what it is, I think that could be the first of all, admitting that and then looking at what you could do with the second party because it's just easy to throw the white flag up, hand the listing back, give it to someone else. That person's going to sell it for what it's worth and you'll miss out on a commission and genuinely if you are the right agent for the right job, you should fight for the listing. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Does that make sense? Yeah. No, thank you very much. That's really okay. uh, helpful. Thank you. So what, what, what could you do just, you know, what we what could you do? And, and here's a question for you, Matt. What what could you do to like repair the relationship? You know, when somebody's well, that like, I, I want to take the listing away, I want to do this. I've always, if there's ever been a pre- pressure cooker situation that I've ever been in, I've never actually personally been in one touch wood, but um, I've had to defuse ones over the years in my career for other people. A third party interjection always works really well. So if uh, I'm selling Claudio's house and I'm doing everything I can and I'm not just breaking through, I'd probably bring Clinton in, and just to use the room he yeah. was sitting in, to say, look, I want to show you Clinton's perspective because he's also out in the market, he's doing things. And it, it, it's a third party endorsement from somebody else. Um, it just breaks the cycle. So that's what I would I would normally do clouds in that situation. Yeah, no, and yeah. I think that's yeah. a great advice because I hear a different voice. Yep. Yeah. Someone else is different who's fresh. And, and that in. person might just have a I'm, – I'm not saying you haven't got empathy or compassion. I'm not exactly sure, but it's going to need somebody who's they feel is on their side in this journey. Correct. It's not somebody who just wants to make a quick sale because if it's someone to make a quick sale, mate, I'd hand the keys back this afternoon and work on something else if that's what you really want to achieve. You don't strike me to be someone that doesn't – you probably wouldn't have made this call if you didn't uh, think you – that was your you, – you need to build a client for life out of this. And the way to do it is show them that you're going to war for them. Correct. You're on their side. Yeah, you're going to war. You're not actually on their side. You're actually going to go. You're going to get the highest price possible in the market, whatever it takes, seven days a week, 365, to make sure that bank doesn't get that set of keys in their hands because it'll be a fire sale yeah. otherwise. Mm. So, Wayne, what could you do? What would be your next sort of three steps with these people you feel? What would be the next three steps that you could do with this listing right now? Um, well, I'll get a, a third party in the office to contact the client. Um, can, can I just yeah, pull yeah, you yeah, up on yeah, that? Yeah. Sorry, were you going where I was going? Yeah, okay. well, you go. It's not a contact, it's a face-to-face meeting. That's what I was going to say. Um, it's not just a random phone call. And, it, and it's, a, it's an empathetic call. It's, it goes like this, Wayne. Mr. and Mrs. Jones, I've just been thinking about how I can um, really, I really want to support you on this journey. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to come down tomorrow at 2 o'clock with um, Claudio and Zena. We're going to sit down with a proper plan to get this sold for you at the absolute maximum price. Is 2 o'clock suit or is 4 o'clock better? 
Um, that's how I wouldn't be saying I'm just going to get some random to f- give a phone call. Yeah. Because they're going to be mm-hmm. going, who's this? Like Wayne's not calling me. Yeah. He's obviously just throwing the ball to someone else. Correct. So can you see the difference in – it's the same outcome but see the difference in the delivery? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Doing the face-to-face, introducing that third party. Secondly is I would also think about doing, you know, like being in their shoes and throwing the embassy. You know, I learned this years ago, feel, felt, found. And like just going, mm, you know, I understand how you feel. Other clients just like you in the similar position that you guys are in at the moment mm. um, have felt very much the same way. But what our best clients have found is once we sat down and we put a really good clear map and strategy and I brought Matt LaHood on board for us to work together, we were able to achieve top dollar for your home and you guys get a great result because that's what you want. Yeah? And I think we've just um, had. I think he dropped had, out. He's just hey. dropped out. He's just dropped out. Anything Clouds, else that you what could. What was that? Feel, found, Fe- no, felt. Fe- feel, <laughs> feel, found. Feel, feel, feel felt. felt, found. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, I've heard that before too. Yeah, it was too it's fast. Almost, you said it too fast. Yeah, yeah. For me. Sort of like, you know, first <laughs> I quite tr- got it. Try, tr- try and get onto their level. Yeah. I understand how you feel. Other clients, just like you, so you're relating it, have, have, have felt. Um, I understand how you feel. Other clients, just like you, have felt the same way. But what our best clients have found is once we're able to put a strategy in place and a roadmap, we were able to recreate the buyer excitement, re-energize the listing, yeah, which then attracted before. offers, which then led to getting top dollar for your home because and, okay. and they feel good about it because you want to feel good, right, Matt? Yeah. yeah okay, 100%. let's use our strategy. Yeah. So the feel felt fan goes really well. I think. So I hope I hope Wayne got something out of the call. He's actually dropped out. So so you guys know it's always live here. At <laughs> the <mid-tours. laughs> is Nothing is pre-recorded in terms of. You know what we do, but um, I, I, I think this thing of it, empathy is like, yeah, yeah. I want to like Phil Fell found. I've heard of it before. There's yeah. a there's we used to do a sales one called LSCPA. What's that? What's Listen, LSCPA? Share, um, CPA present ask. What was the C? Listen share. Fuck, I can't remember now. Okay, did you Anyways. swear then? <laughs> <laughs> Beep. No, I used to. Um, but it was yeah. yeah. I, I think he's he hasn't rang back, so I reckon he's gone straight down to this listing now to sort I hope it out. So. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. <laughs> I'm only joking. But the empathy thing is, I think, a massive. Like, I I don't know the ins and outs of sales that well from a real estate side of things, but I know that in stark comparison to the previous call we had, um, without putting yourself in that person's shoes, mm. you're never really going to be able to communicate effectively with them. Like, it's so true. You know what I mean? Like it's a scary yeah. situation. I, like I'm trying to imagine myself right now in that situation where the bank is oh, breathing down my neck for the you, last 12 months. Yeah. yeah. And I feel like I'm $300,000 different with an agent. Mm. If they're not showing empathy to me, I think that I don't, they don't I'm care. kicking them to the curb. Yeah, yeah. totally. Yeah. Understand. Totally. Totally. I couldn't agree with you. You just more. want someone in that. You look, you want, some, you want an agent in every situation who feels like a bodyguard. That's really the reality. They're, they're putting themselves in front of you to protect you from the market. Correct. That's really how it should feel. You and I, Clouds, totally. you've sold hundreds of properties. Totally. I've sold hundreds. You know, like every vendor that's really loved me over the years has gone, Matt, you absolutely looked, you milked it for us. You, you got the last dollar. You didn't, you know. And you not left to, no stone unturned. You squeeze that lemon dry That's for a us. really red flag. I've got to say in 30 years, I've never seen anyone in one week can someone unless yeah. there was something really bad. Yeah. I, so, wonder, I wonder if that relationship was good from the start or not. Yeah, I, I wonder. Because if, I, if, yeah, if I was ever in a situation where I had that email from somebody, I'd be like, yeah, see ya. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's not, yeah. it's it's not easy to have somebody not want to oh, work yeah. with me. But yeah. after a week, it's not so. It's hard enough to come on the market, get photos, this, that, the other signboards, marketing to can someone after one week. Yeah. They got to be passionate about canning you. Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. We're done. Exactly, yeah, we're done. We're done. It's a wrap. All right, All right. here we go. I reckon he's running. The weekend out of juice. has started. <laughs> no, it hasn't started for poor Maddie. He's run out of juice. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's I'm only warming up for the night shift, boys. I don't know what you guys are doing. Night shift. Got something great from this episode? It would mean the world to us if you passed it on. Tune in each week as we mentor a new agent. Have a question? Want to be on the show? Get in touch with Claudio Encina, Matt LaHood, or visit our Facebook page. The Mentors is brought to you by Sprinkler.media.